What's up everyone? I'm Melissa McCack from Room 51 and this is Teach the Teach on the Dice Tower where I teach you how to teach a board game and in this video I'll be covering Overlord. Now this is a how to teach video meaning I'm assuming you already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games. This is just a way that has worked for me and could possibly help you out if you have any sort of difficulties uh, teaching games or Overlord in particular. I know that this is on Kickstarter so people might not have gotten the game just yet but um, just to get a head start maybe on uh, learning how to teach this game. So I'm going to be teaching this as though uh, you're teaching this to younger kids. Uh, the box says eight and up, so if you're teaching it to an eight-year-old, maybe um, if you're teaching this to somebody who's older, you could definitely skip over some of this stuff and just go through uh, other things that I mentioned in the video. Uh, but I'm going to be doing this as though you are teaching this to a child. Uh, and you know your child best, so uh, there might be things that you want to skip over, and that's totally fine. But if maybe you want to slow things down, that's okay too, and that's how I'm really going to show this. I always start off with three main things. The story behind the game, where you're trying to be the best overlord there ever was. And then I go into the objective of the game, where you're just trying to get the most victory points, and then how that game ends when uh, everybody has filled up their entire player board. Uh, if you're playing with a kid, so I would probably stack the deck a little bit. Uh, normally you would shuffle up these tiles, but I would say maybe you could stack the deck a little bit and have the first four tiles come out and they could just be two each of uh, the forest and the camp tiles. The reason being, I think these are the easiest maybe to explain and they go well together when you couple them together uh, for somebody to understand what they do. And you could just say, you could start off by the forest, letting them know um, that the more forest you have on your table or on your player board, uh, the more points you'll get. And then same thing for camp tokens, only you can't have uh, the same uh, flag for each one. And then you'll get more points for that. So then, uh, and this is also good so that uh, you can get right into playing, right? I think that kids, they typically just want to get to playing, uh, usually, immediately. So uh, this would take like a one-two step thing. So you'll also have monster tokens paired with these tiles. Um, I would probably start off by not playing with the portal token and the crystal token. Uh, they just add a couple more rules that you don't quite need for the first playthrough. The game is very quick anyway. It takes about like 20 minutes, so you could play through um, a lesser version of the game just for the 20 minutes, and then you could start adding more and more rules. I would say by the next game that you play, you could then add in these two tokens. But for now, we might leave them out. So when they're picking their tile and they're picking the monster with it, um, another rule I'm going to drop for right now is uh, the rule where if you're, you're going to get more and more points if you're in a row and column of the same monsters, if they match up. Uh, so I think it's called like a band of monsters. I would probably drop that rule for the first time playing and just say you're going to get an extra point if you place this monster on a tile that actually matches this token, right? So for example, what am I holding? The dragon here with the cave. So if the dragon was on the cave tile, cool, he's worth one point now. Awesome. Um, this will lead uh, into like not as many strategies and choices in the game, uh, dropping a couple of these rules, but by the next game, at least they'll uh, know how to play a good chunk of the game and then they'll actually get to uh, get to the really cool and interesting things uh, that are offered in this game strategy-wise. Uh, you could keep in these little uh, boss monsters, which are just straight up worth two points. So if they come out onto the field, you could say uh, that they're worth two points just right off the bat. And that's really it. So you could start to play immediately when you explain just these two tiles first uh, and then explaining how the monsters work and how to actually gain points from them. Then you could go into the next round and I would probably, again, stacking the deck, the next four tiles could be two of each of these tiles, right? So your swamp and your cave. And I'd probably start off by explaining the cave and just saying um, that if you place the cave, you know, near one of these mountain tiles or terrain, uh, on the edge of the board, you'll gain more points for them. 
Same thing for the swamp, only this adds a little more complexity, right? Because the swamp now, yes, it wants to be next to water, but it also wants to be next to another swamp tile um, for extra points. So you'll want to explain that to them, and then you go ahead, start picking up your tiles. Then in the third round, you'll have these stacked. So these two tiles, two of each uh, for the four tiles, and I would start off by going over the graveyard, right? Just saying, you know, the, mo the person who has the most of these will get the most points for it, uh, second, most, second most points, and then, you know, you'll just gain points just for having it on the board. The last tile you want to explain is this one, and this one might be the most challenging to explain, but it, it's not too bad, right? So you just place this and you just say, hey, for every unique tile surrounding it, you're going to gain an extra point. Um, and then you're pretty much ready to go and you're ready to play. Then by your next game, you could introduce these two little tokens. Just, uh, I would probably mention the crystal first and how those work when they come out. You don't have to explain them right off the bat. It's just whenever they come out um, as you're playing the game. And you could even let the kid know or the child know uh, that there's going to be a couple of extra rules now for some more strategy. So I would say first starting off with the monsters, letting them know, if you have the same monster in the column and in the same row, you're going to get more points for that. So you want like monsters uh, to create a monster band. Uh, and then whenever the crystal comes out, you could explain how the crystal works. And then whenever the portal comes out as well, you could explain how that portal works. Uh, but from there, you're good to go. You got two games played already, and now everybody knows how to play the game. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know how you would like to teach this game down below in the comments section. Uh, and just have a good time playing it. All right. I will catch you next time.